Do you know how a hot air balloon works? Well, I'm here with Duncan to find out. So, first of all, this is your own design. Correct. Yep. What is it? Okay, so this is the, the, the high pressure propane manifold system. The sort of thing that you'd be familiar with seeing, maybe you've seen a, a hot air flying in the evening, the summer's evening perhaps, is the element that's normally above the pilot's head and that we'd be providing heat for the hot air balloon. Um, and so I could talk you through it if you want. Yes, or... please, because I'd love to know how, how it works. Okie dokie. Right, well, so firstly, you, you would have propane cylinders uh, within the basket or around the basket that would have your liquid propane in. So the liquid propane's under pressure, about 300 psi-ish. Um, uh, and then we will have fuel lines will come in. We'll have a fuel line for each burner. We've got an entry here, and we've got an entry over this side as well. Um, can be seen on the, on the actual manifold block itself here. So that'd be fuel in. You can see actually by the, hopefully by this component here, you can see there's lots of cross drillings to, to connect, communicate various um, chambers to other chambers. Um, and you can sort of see it there in, in, in that is the same one as that green one over there. Um, so what we have, fuel will come in, liquid fuel. When the trigger is squeezed, up to here, you can see the, the uh, valve lift up, back down again. That lets fuel travel through. It then comes in, liquid form, into the vaporization coil down here, the stainless steel coil. Travels up, the, hatch, the, the whole manifold is upside down at the moment, but it travels in this direction. As it travels through there, it, the liquid is starting to boil to a vapor, to, to, to a gas. Um, that liquid gas combination is then transmitted back down to the main uh, jet ring down here. And you can see these brass jets, I don't know if you can see, if maybe my finger is pointing okay here. And through those nozzles, we'll then get uh, the propane and it will ignite on a pilot light and you'll get a bloody massive flame. Um, whilst that bloody massive flame is, is burning, that's providing heat to the coil, which then further aids the vaporization of the liquid into a gas and so forth, the, the cycle goes on. What's quite, is an interesting element, I suppose. You've got a, a system here that has to exist with extreme temperature high and extreme temperature low, because as that liquid boils down to a, or boils off to a, to a vapor, it, it experiences a, a, a much colder shift. So you can actually have a lot of condensation and chilling, in fact, freezing of certain components up here whilst you've got all this heat coming out here. I mean, full chap, interesting fact, with both burners fully open, we've got another type of burn nozzle here, a liquid burn nozzle, everything open, you're talking about five megawatts of, of, of power. <laughs> this one, one double assembly here. And how, how high is that flame actually reaching? Okay, uh, I mean, you know, we, 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 what you're trying to do through this design here in particular is what we've concentrated on. You really want a slender flame that goes a long way into the envelope. The envelope's the section, the, the fabric section, that classic teardrop shape you'd have of, of a hot air balloon that you'd draw as a kid or whatever. Um, you want that flame to, to reach as far as possible. So you've got that radiated heat nice and evenly heating the air within that volume. Um, so you want to make it as long as possible, really. A good 20 plus foot. Um, it's enough to make you wince and to stay away from, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really want to be anywhere near that, if I'm brutally honest. No, indeed, indeed, indeed. So like all aircraft parts, you want to have, you want to have um, redundancy. So the aircraft, okay, hot air balloon, aircraft, sometimes you wouldn't associate one with the other, but it is an aircraft. They're all part of a family called LTA, which is Light Air Than Air LTA. You, you want to have um, redundancy. So the aircraft needs to be able to fly on either section. So if you have a mechanical failure with a fuel tank that's connected to this side or a component failure within here, you can fly on the other side. So th th there's a lot of safety built into to the mechanism here. And even within the individual manifold, there are safety elements and, and you, know, you can imagine safety is a priority yeah. of these things. Now, this is your own design and I, yep. want, to, I want to name drop here. Yes. Because You've built one of these for a very well-known person. Yeah, so we, we, the, the history stems from involvement with, with Ver, Virgin, Richard Branson, um, over the years, over the decades, in fact, um, from 
the, the late 80s from flying a hot air balloon across the Atlantic um, through to a Pacific crossing, um, a high altitude uh, record attempted and, and succeeded with Pearl Inchrand. Uh, and then later on in the, in the 90s would have been the um, transglobal, the round the world. Got to be careful, there are different categories of balloon flights. So the, yes, we were involved, more my father, with the Atlantic and Pacific, which were records for um, hot air crossings. It still holds the record for um, the only crossing uh, or hot air balloon, also the fastest. Now, it's the weirdest thing. You wouldn't, I know, I know, I know what you think. You wouldn't think you'd get a fast hot air balloon, and, and you kind of don't. They could only go at the speed of the air, um, of the wind, if you want to call it that. But the concept behind their flight method was to get it high enough to travel within the jet stream. And we've all kind of heard of jet streams. You, know, you may or may not have noticed when you fly to America and back from America, one way takes longer than the other. And you may not notice, but there'll be a definite time if you come back from America, traveling east is going to be a quicker journey because the aircraft is also flying in the jet stream, right? saving fuel, making it a quicker time. So those uh, record attempts were done, flown with the balloon in the jet stream as well. And so I think it was 200 and something miles an hour, which is not bad for a hot air balloon, I don't think. And talking about flying in the jet stream, can you, we talk about flying a hot yeah. air balloon. Now, yeah. a lot of people, which was me included, thought, you went up, yeah. you followed the wind, yeah. and you landed. Yeah. Can you fly, to extend, a hot air balloon? Can you fly directional? Okay. Or is there something else in there? Okay, so flying, yeah, it's a bit, almost a bit like sailing in some respects. You know, it's, it's a bit, you can draw parallels. Um, so in a sailboat, you will have a, a rudder. You don't have a rudder or a tiller or anything like that. But you can manipulate its direction by... Um, following the different directions of the wind. So at different altitudes, you'll have different directions of wind. So you, you can get steerage, depending on how high up you, you go and where you are. You can also look at the local terrain. There might be a hillside. You may end up with a, a flow of air coming down the hillside, and you, you could get into that and then travel in one direction, go up, and maybe the, the prevailing wind is, is easterly, for argument's sake. You could steer yourself. So there is, there is definitely an element of steerage available, but you, you, you're only steering by using the winds which are there. You can't go against the wind, no. No. And then, one final question, and it's something we spoke about before this, but how do you get a hot air balloon that's laid flat on its side on a field, how do you get that in the sky well, and not burn straight through the side of it? Well, it's like the world's worst camping trip, quite frankly. <laughs> You, um, you, have to, you have to lay out the fabric, the, the envelope, the fabric section. It's laid out, you know, you tease it out from a large bag. It's just like camping, but 10 times worse, in my <laughs> opinion. I don't like camping. Um, and you tease out this big bit of fabric. It takes a few volunteers, and you tease it out, and so it's flat as a sort of teardrop 2D shape on the floor. Um, you will then connect the, the, the basket, the bit that the pilot and the passengers sit within, and that will actually be tilted over on its side, so it's on its side all as if the whole thing is just down flat on its side. Um, hold the mouth of the, of the envelope open, fill it with, um, with a, a cold air inflation. So you use a, a fan, a large fan, petrol powered fan. Brrr, and off it goes, brrr, and it's, it, you know, you're there, and it's noisy, and you're like, I thought this was supposed to be peaceful, but it's not. <laughs> and, brrr, and the air gets in, and it starts to get shape, it starts to flap around. And once it gets to enough shape and enough volume of air within that envelope, then you can start to apply a bit of a burn, a blast, or a and blast it away. And ever so slowly, you'll give it a bit more, a bit more shape, and then you give it a longer burn, and it'll start, to, the, the, the hot air is now less dense, of course, and it's starting to, to, to bring that whole assembly, including the basket, upright, until you get the full shape that you would recognize as, as, a, as a hot air balloon. Um, and then you get your passengers on board, and you give it, and it, you, you're just balancing the amount of heat in there. You don't want to take off. You normally have it tethered. Um, and then once you've got all on board and you're happy, give it a bit more heat and it poof, and off you go. And you're away. Yeah, going down. Well, Duncan, that was, I didn't know how to fly a hot air balloon. No. I didn't know how a hot air balloon worked. I've got some sort of idea now. Yeah. Um, and I just want to reiterate with people at home, this is completely your design. You designed this from... From, yeah. your, from your father upwards? Yeah, this exactly was... that. It's, you know, as, as, as a lot of designs, there's evolutionary steps in there, but this, this is ours, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's not really much more I can say, but thank you. No, thank and, you. And, and, and thank you for letting us in.
on this week's Fourth and Chips. Well, it's nice to have somebody that's showing some interest in our, well, relatively boring subject, so it's oh, good. I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't put boring and this in the same category. <laughs>